Marab hasn't lost since I don't know when. I think his last loss was to my own teammate, Ricky Simone, and that was years and years ago. And Marab hasn't been given a title fight. People aren't even talking about giving him a title fight if he beats by the legend Aldo, who used to be champion. Generally, the history of this sport is if you beat a former champion, you get an opportunity to become champion yourself. That discussion has not even begun. On a young and hungry, beautiful, rising star of Marab, I'm only sharing that with you because if Aldo is to lose, it's very unlikely that he can return to that status. Now, Dana won't force him out. He's done enough. You guys are still going to want to watch him. It's going to be a personal choice. But the information that we've been giving, and that's all I'm regurgitating for you right now. I'm not speaking for Aldo, and I'm certainly not calling for the retirement of the great Jose Aldo, but I am having a real hard conversation with you guys that if he loses this fight, it might be the last time you ever see him fight. Not according to me, according to him, according to what this is all about. So it's very meaningful. Here's the problem he's got with Marab, all right? Good news and bad news, and they're the same piece of news. It's three rounds. Now, the, the reason that's good news is Marab never slows down. He never gets tired. Fighting Marab for 25 minutes is a pain in anybody ass, even the great Jose Aldo, for sure. But now you've got to get the jump on a guy who's got a motor on him. You've got to do it now. You cannot waste time. If Marab goes out and controls the first 10 minutes and sails the last five in, he still wins, right? The strategy is very different when you have three rounds. Jose Aldo can't give away any time. Jose Aldo's got those combinations. He can come to the head. He can touch you in the liver. He can chop you to the leg, but he's got to find those spots. He can't go look for them. He has to find them right now. He cannot use the first round as a feeling out process or as a way to slow a guy down or as a way to measure a guy. Anything that you've ever heard an announcer say for a boring product, he can't do any of that stuff. He's got to win right now. That's generally harder to do on a younger guy. Now, nothing's changed for Aldo. There's no opponent that we can go and grab and we're not having the same discussion, which is Aldo is the veteran who, at least in theory, has more to lose and at least in theory is going to have a speed deficit. There's no opponent that we could throw out there where we don't say those exact same words. Marab's in more of a unique spot. Marab trains every day with uh, Aljo, who is the sitting world champion. He understands this weight class. He can't let anybody get in his way. Marab would be happier if it was a five-round fight. If Marab had it his way, it'd be a 12-round fight. So Marab's under the same pressure as Jose, which is there's no feeling out. I got to go and I got to find you right now. The danger that these both guys fight with, and as much as they're both willing to stay on their feet and trade, one guy, probability-wise, is going to get caught. You're far more unlikely to get to a decision and having a conversation about three rounds versus five rounds. However, it does go to a decision, it's much more likely to favor Marab. It's a big match, guys. I, I can't imagine a scenario where anybody ever cheers against Jose Aldo. He's got himself to a point in the sport where he's now an inspiration. You could aspire to be like him, aspire to have this drive. It's hard enough to get up in the morning. Imagine having the success that Jose had, but you just want to feel it one more time. You want that rush, you want that excitement one more time. You're willing to walk through fire to get it. I do feel that this is the underlooked fight of 135 pounds. I've seen headlines and been part of conversations that has to do with O'Malley versus Peter Yan, and I participated in this for over a month now. This fight is overlooked. We all had some fun. Cheeto Vera going into Dominic Cruz's hometown of San Diego. This fight matters, and no one's discussing it. And it's not our fault. There's a mistake here by Marab. There's a mistake here by Aldo. Whatever happened with their managements and within their teams, whatever happened to have such a beautiful contest with the city champion of the world and Aljamain Sterling is saying, if Marab wins, Marab fights for my belt. When you have the blessing of the sitting champion, you are in a match that matters. And this one's going overlooked, but guys, there's still time, right? Because we, we have a job in here too. We can appreciate when somebody gets our attention. We can appreciate when somebody's really good with the promotion and the self-promotion. But every now and then, you've got some really great talents. That's not their strong point, and we got to fill in the gaps. we got to fill in the gaps here, and it's not too late. Something, something positive 
needs to happen to the winner of this fight? Do they go from here into a contention fight? Does what happened with the sitting champion all Joe is saying should happen, which is the winner here should be fighting for the belt? I don't think we're going to get that far, but at least we all agree that something positive should happen. The clock's ticking. These guys haven't sold the fight, but they've sold us plenty of other good things. Let's help them out here. Let's fill in the blanks. I'll start. I'll get the dialogue going. I'll start with my prediction. I'm taking Marab.